I'm David Zeitlin from the University of Oxford. I've co-curated the exhibition Photo Cameroon Studio Portraiture 1970-1990s with Erica Jones from the Fowler Museum. Here I'm going to talk about the different sorts of studios the photographers had. In another presentation, I explored one of the images displayed outside Jacques Tousselet's studio, a photo of a couple. The display photograph above that one was a photograph of the photographer and his family. I haven't found the original negative for this image, however, a detail had been printed was, and was in his personal album, which is why I've been able to get to copy it. In this talk, I want to really consider the question of what is a studio. Of the three photographers in the exhibition, Jacques Tousselet is most clearly a studio photographer, and Samuel Finlack the least, with Joseph Cheeler somewhere in between. The point about studios as physical spaces is that they allowed the photographer to control more aspects of the images than when photographs were taken outside. In a studio, the photographer could offer a range of different painted backdrops, somewhere for clients to change clothes if they wanted several images in different costumes, and a range of different studio props. When electricity was available, they could use studio lights to create uniformly lit images. One example of clients changing clothes is in the exhibition. We have uh, Thomas Fochumo, the chief of Bavete, and his wife, Mephire Madeleine, who also appears photographed alone, in different costumes. And the studio had several props. One was the standing iron grillwork, visible in those last images and in many others. Another is a painted gourd. A very different sort of studio prop was the New Year cutout within which, studio, um, within which sitters could pose. And this came out every New Year and can be seen in many images. Another very popular prop throughout the year was a plastic tree, something like an artificial Christmas tree. Here are just a couple of examples. But to return to the topic of the studios themselves, as well as shooting in his studio, Jacques Tousselet took plenty of photographs outside the physical space of the studio. Most significantly, with his apprentices, he would attend weekly markets in the outlying villages in the area around Buda, where he would, in effect, create a makeshift temporary studio, attaching a backcloth to a wall to make a neutral background, and sometimes putting lino down on, uh, as a sort of floor. Things like his motorcycle would then be used as props. And in some cases, it is clear that actual props from the studio were also taken outside. Sometimes photographs were taken at people's homes and used their cloth or blankets as backdrops and their own gourds as props. After he completed his apprenticeship, Joseph Chilo worked in Mayodale. At that time, there was no main electricity there. So, although he had a shop from which he sold his photographs and where his darkroom was, and where he had a painted backdrop, this was mainly used attached to walls outside. His photographs were a mix of those taken inside using flash and natural light outside. Actually, he had more than one painted backdrop. He arrived in Mayodali with a backdrop from Buddha, painted by someone who had supplied several backdrops for Jacques, but he then commissioned his own that catered for the largely Muslim population resident in Mayodale. It, can, it features schematic scenes of the Kaaba in Mecca and has Arabic-style writing in decorative bands. By contrast, Samuel Finlack never had a painted backdrop and his photos were almost exclusively taken outside. However, Finlack did use cloth, 
plain or decorated as a sort of backdrop, and many of his subjects used possessions in the same ways that Tusele's clients used, the studio props. The effect of all this is to blur the difference between studio and non-studio. When Jacques Tousselet visited clients in their houses, he would take photographs that in the way they are opposed, the ways that the client's possessions are used as props, are very similar to those of Samuel Finlack and Joseph Chila. A last note. In 1974, Joseph Chila originally called his studio in Mayo Dale Young Photo Playboy. This was clearly a popular studio no name among the apprentices. In Yokoduma, another apprentice called himself Photo Emmanuel Playboy. However, Chila ended up toning down his appearance and the name of the studio to Photo Joseph to fit the more rural, the more conservative demeanour of Mayo Dali. <laughs>